So remember when we said that the average value equals zero? What do we mean by that? Why can't we use the average value instead of the RMS value for our AC voltage? Let's take a look. So in your handbook, this, this is the notation that your handbook uses. This X of T right here is going to be your instantaneous function. Your average value is one over the period times the integral with respect to one period of this function. Your RMS value, root mean square, root as in the square root. Square as in now we're going to square the function before we evaluate it over one period, right? Times one over the period, then we're going to take the root of that. So go ahead, grab your calculator. I wanna know if this is a sine function, right? Let's say this is just sine of x or sine of t. Calculate the average value of a sine wave. This formula right here, using your calculator. I wanna see what you get. And I'm gonna do a two on the calculator so we can look at it together. So I've got x average equals one over t. What's the period of one sine wave? What's this value right here? We're gonna to have to use degrees or radians. I'm gonna use radians. Two pi, yeah, exactly. So our period, the time it takes to complete one cycle is two pi. So I've got one divided by two pi radians, right? To the integral of zero to the same period of two pi times X of T, right? X of T is just your function. In this case, we're gonna use sine of X times DX. All right, in my calculator, I've got fraction one divided by, oh, I'm in degrees, see that? Let's change our mode to radians, since we're working with radians and not degrees. All right, we'll try that again. I've got one divided by two pi. Here's my integral button. I've got zero to the same two pi. And I'm just gonna use sine of x. Now, even if this was sine of t, when you're evaluating this integral in your calculator, you always use the x variable because you're integrating with respect to the x variable on your calculator. Ooh, is that a fraction? There we go. And then let's put the fraction right over here. We'll say one divided by two pi and then I'll delete that two pi. All right. So if we'd set this integral up correctly, we should get exactly zero. Look at that. The average value of a sine wave is zero. And if I wanna look at this graphically, what does the integral mean? When we take the integral of something, what are we calculating? We're really calculating what? The area under the curve. Right? So if I look at this graphically, this area on top of the curve is positive, right? Because it's a above the y-axis. This area under this curve is negative because it's below the y-axis. Are these areas equal? Yeah, they sure are. So when I add one value and then I subtract that same value, I get zero. Yeah, be careful with your, if you're gonna use radians, so if we're integrating the sine function from one over two pi to zero to two pi, I'm in radians. You can barely see it, but on top of the calculator, it says RAD for radians. <clears throat> you can do the same thing. You can do one over 360, zero to 360 if you're in degrees, and you'll get the same value of zero. All right, how about, let's try to calculate the RMS value of this same sine wave. So we're gonna use this formula here up top on the right. We're, we're gonna see what we get. So now I've got X RMS, X RMS equals, here's my square root, I'm gonna start it off here. I've got one over the same period of two pi, integrating over the same period of two pi. Careful, we're gonna square it now. So I've got sine squared X 
times dx, right? Or sine of t dt, right? Same thing. And I want to make sure that whole value is under that square root. Again, anytime I see a pi, I know I'm in radians. Double check my mode, make sure I'm in radians. Great. All right, so now I've got, let's see, here's my square root. Here's my fraction. One over two pi, my period. Here's my integral. Zero to two pi. And now I've got to square that sign, right? So I've got sine of x. I'm going to close the parentheses and I'm going to square it. Typically, the notation is to write sine squared x or cosine squared x, but in your calculator, you've got to do it after the parentheses. So I'm going to square it. Look at that. Zero point seven zero seven. Does anyone know what that number is? Remember when I wrote it on the last slide? What is this equal to? What is one divided by square root of two? Is that the same value? We should get the exact same decimals. Look, six, seven, eight, one at the very end. If I scroll up, I should have the exact, look, six, seven, eight, one. These are the exact same numbers all the way to the repeating decimals or to the long decimals. So 0 0.707 is really one over square root of two. See that? So the RMS of a sine wave is the same as your peak divided by square root of two. What value did we use for the, for the peak voltage when we did this? What value did we use for the peak? Yeah, I used one. Look, I used a peak of one here and a peak of one here. Remember this sine of X would include your peak, right? Times your sine WT. So we really used a peak value of one. So that shortcut of your max value divided by square root of two to get your RMS, that actually applies only to a sine wave from this integral. Pretty neat, huh? Um, I wanna try, let's try doing that in degrees to show we can do it in degrees. So I'm gonna take the same thing. I'm gonna paste it down below. Who can tell me <clears throat> what is two pi in degrees? What is my period of a sine function in degrees? It's yeah, 360. So two pi in radians is the same thing as 360 degrees. So now I'm gonna replace my period in radians with 360 degrees. And if we do everything right, we should get the same 0 0.707 or one over the square root of two. So let's see how, to, how I can do that. I'm gonna to try to recall the same function since it's already typed out. Making sure I don't have a, a hanging fraction like last time. Okay, great. I'm gonna use second to the left to fly all the way over to the left. I'm gonna replace this two pi on the bottom with 360. Great. And the upper limit, I'm gonna leave the bottom limit zero. I'm gonna replace the upper limit with 360. And now I gotta do one more thing. What do I got to do? What's the last mode? It's hard to see, right? Let's see if we can do this. Ah, look at that. What does my calculator say in the top right? It says rad, right? It stands for radians. So I've got to go to mode and change from radians back to degrees. So now we went from rad to degrees. I can go back to that function and press enter. And I've got, look at that, 0 0.707, just like before. Zero point seven oh seven. Pretty neat, huh? Um, me personally, a lot of times I like to work with radians for my integrals. Uh, a lot of times you see these in in, in a radian form. Uh, different practice problems. The what's one of the biggest mistakes you can make if you do an integral in radians and you go on to work complex numbers? If you don't change your calculator from radians back to degrees, 
everything's going to be wrong, right? When we're working with, let's say theta V, this is degrees, right? Not a radian. So if we're working with complex numbers after solving one of these problems, if we're still in radians, we're going to be in trouble. Me personally, anytime I use radians, as soon as I'm done, I go right back to degrees on my calculator. I don't wait. I don't wait. 